from the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrily Joyce. Well, good day to you. I'm Marilee Joyce. This is Eye on Washington, the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic, it is the battery of the future and a huge deposit of the mineral that makes it happens to be in Nevada. We'll find out if Nevada could soon lead the nation in the production of lithium. My very special guest today is Dennis Bryan, the vice president of the Humboldt County-based Western Lithium Corporation. Thanks for being here today. Well, thank you, Marilee. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. One of this world's largest lithium deposits is under development and one day may provide the energy to power up many of the products you rely on each and every day. And it just happens to be located in the great state of Nevada. And today on Ion Washington, we'll tell you about this mineral that's abundant in the Silver State. We'll tell you why it's in such demand globally. And we'll tell you what my guest says needs to happen on Capitol Hill to make it easier to produce lithium and get it to the products that rely on it to function. Let's start off with what lithium and lithium ion batteries are. Lithium is a silver white metal that's highly reactive and has the highest heat density of any solid element. Well, historically, it's been used in greases, ceramics, glass, pharmaceuticals, but over the past decade or so, demand has surged because lithium ion batteries have replaced other technologies for mobile electronic devices like cell phones and laptop computers and portable tools. And that's not all. Lithium battery technology has evolved and now is recognized as the battery of choice to lead the electrification of transportation, which is a fancy way of saying hybrid and electric cars. That'll be by far the greatest usage of lithium, and it is what's driving demand right now. And the reason we're talking about all this on my program is because one of the world's, that's world's largest known lithium deposits is in Humboldt County, which is located not far from Winnemucca. Now, Mr. Bryan, your company is uh, developing this deposit. And therefore, you, uh, your company, is at the forefront of what could be uh, Nevada's national ranking and uh, international very high ranking as a producer of lithium. Well, absolutely, Marilee. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Western Lithium and about this deposit. Well, Western Lithium, uh, we've been around about three years. We are, uh, uh, the deposit was originally found back in the early 80s, late 70s by Chevron Resources when they were looking for uranium in the area. Sure. Well, there happened to be some lithium nearby. Lithium back then was of, of interest because of its potential fusion, atomic fusion. And uh, that was going to be the, the power of the future, perhaps. Well, uh, Chevron spent a lot of time uh, uh, looking at the, de the deposit, uh, drilling it, uh, evaluating it. And then the lithium market went away. So they aban abandoned it in the, uh, in the 80s. We came along in the uh, uh, about five years ago. <laughs> it was it was a, a, a separate company, and uh, we've been developing it ever since. And the surge, uh, the the demand is high now. I, I don't want to get too technical, but would you help my audience understand this? Why does lithium make a better battery? Well, lithium is the battery of choice going into the future because of the uh, what they call the energy density. In other words, it's the it's the lightest metal on the periodic table. And it, uh, it, it doesn't have a, a residual. It, it takes a, a charge faster. It doesn't have a memory. It uh, discharges faster. So for, a, for a, a weight of a battery, it is a compact battery that can uh, outperform other battery technologies. So that's the battery of the future. And, and your laptop, your cell phones, and the cars of the future are going to use lithium. In fact, the cars right now the Chevy Volt, the Nissan. And you can imagine the amount of, of lithium in a, in a cell phone is a, 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 you know, a fraction of a gram. The amount of lithium that's going into a battery for a vehicle is going to be 25 to 50 pounds. So that is the, that is the tremendous drive for the increased interest in lithium. And worldwide. very exciting for the state of Nevada. You know, um, we're going to talk more about your big project uh, in, uh, in our next segment, but 
right now, most lithium comes from Chile and Argentina. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and South America. And if this uh, does well, it could be soon the, the Great Silver State could be a, a huge leading producer of lithium. Well, we'd like to be a domestic producer of lithium. Why, you know, we import a lot of oil. Uh, do we want to import lithium? I want to say too, you know, um, lithium is as big as you've said for hybrid cars, for your cell phone, for laptops. I read that um, the batteries are also gaining in popularity for military and aerospace applications and, and more. What, what else uh, might you use a lithium battery for? Well, there's a, a, a mass storage devices. In other words, if you have a wind farm or a solar farm to store that energy, you could put it in, in, in massive lithium batteries. And then and use the power uh, later as as, you, as whatever it's the, the demand is there. What's this going to mean for Nevada? It could mean well the the, the development of, of our deposit itself, 150 jobs, direct jobs, but it also could that's bring music in, to the ears of everyone listening right now absolutely. in this hard economic time. Job and that's wise. direct jobs. That uh, you know when you multiply that by two or three for indirect, it's it it will be a, a a good stimulus for for Humboldt County. Um, and that's two to three years down the road we hope to be in production. And then a uh, big reputation as one of the, the world's leading lithium producers well, as well. Well, it's recognized as probably the, the fifth largest lithium deposit in, in the Amazing. world. Yeah. Amazing. And when I on Washington returns, we're going to tell you more uh, specific information about this lithium deposit, which is located right near Elko. We're back after this. You're watching Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce. Brought to you by the National Mining Association, the Freest Companies, Caesars Entertainment, NV Energy, the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, Western Lithium Corporation, and Skyline Restaurant and Casino. America's minerals have made us a nation of self-reliant dreamers, shaping our world and the endless ways we enjoy it. But red tape often forces us to import more than half the minerals we depend on. Minerals we already have. We don't import our dreams. Shouldn't that go for our minerals too? The National Mining Association. Learn more at nma.org. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Heads we go, tails we stay. A coin flip, that's how it all began for what is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Charlie Frias, with a can-do spirit and support of his loving wife, Phyllis, bought ABC Union Cab in 1966. They then parlayed five cabs into a fleet of nearly 1,000. And today, Frias has over 2,000 employees and was recently voted Las Vegas' best company to work for. Frias, safe, reliable, simply the best. technology make our lives better. Will geothermal, wind, and solar energy be a bigger part of our future? Yes. And soon it will all be in our backyard. Learn more at nvenergy.com. Welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of Nevada's potential of becoming this nation's leading producer of lithium and thus its huge role in helping power up laptops, cell phones, and other popular products you rely on every day. My special guest today is Dennis Bryan, the vice president of the Western Lithium Corporation, located not near Elko. I'm sorry, that was my mistake. It's actually in Humboldt County, north of Winnemucca. And thanks for being here again. You know that Nevada ranks 
third in the world for gold productions, we've told you here on Ion Washington, but it's also a huge producer of a couple dozen major minerals like lithium, as well as silver, copper, ferrite, clay, uh, silica, and lots more. But it is lithium that might soon shine as a much brighter star among these minerals than it does right now. That's because my guest company is advancing development of one of the largest known lithium deposits in the world. Western Lithium's King Valley Project is on its way to being the United States' first significant domestic supply of commercial lithium for use in those batteries and other technologies I mentioned earlier. The deposit was found by Chevron Resources in the early 70s, as my guest mentioned. Chevron identified about 2 million tons of lithium present there. Since the mineral is not stable and must be shipped as a salt, it actually would be 11 million tons that could be traded on the world market. But as we mentioned, interest in lithium use for atomic fusion and batteries waned. And now that interest is back times 10, and here we are today. Lester, uh, Western Lithium acquired all the lithium-containing mining claims found by Chevron, and extensive subsurface drilling and analytical work has been undertaken to confirm the presence of the mineral, and it is there. It's inside what is called hectorite clay. The Kings Valley Project houses the largest known hectorite clay deposit anywhere. And more good news is that this type of clay is easily mined. So, uh, Mr. Bryan, let, let's start off with this. Paint the picture so you under, so that our, my audience understands. It is inside the clay? It's part of the clay structure. Um, so how is it mined? Well, the, it would be open pit. It would be a, a, a simple mining, no drilling, no blasting. It's a horizontal clay deposit, part of an old um, uh, volcanic uh, a sequence of rocks, very soft. Uh, you'd be able to just kind of scoop it up. The, the mining is going to be relatively easy. It's very shallow. Uh, it's all going to be within 300 feet of the surface. And we're right on a, a, a major power line. Uh, it's a, a flat topography. It's, it's a paved highway is, is right next to it, so the infrastructure is, is there to, to help develop now, it. Now, you mentioned to me uh, prior to this taping that uh, this, this, this hectare clay has, has never been mined as a source of, of lithium. So Nevada's the... No, historically, lithium originally came from a hard rock source called a, a spodumene. That was a, a very hard mineral that was very limited. But it was, uh, the, the lithium was found in brines. In fact, the very first brine deposit in the world was found in Nevada and, and produced and is still producing uh, a, a small amount uh, mm -hmm. down in southern Nevada. The clay deposit is different, but we, it's very high grade lithium. We have almost a, a half percent lithium in, in this clay, which is uh, much higher than, than uh, any of the brines. And we can mine it in, uh, in the morning and process it, and in the afternoon we can wow. have lithium Amazing. carbonate. I, I, now, uh, where are we now, and when do you uh, anticipate going into actual production? Well, we are in a pre-feasibility study at the moment, and the pre-feasibility will tell us all the economics of uh, everything we need to, to mine and extract the lithium, because we've got to compete on the world market. And uh, we are uh, going to start our permitting process. Uh, by the end of this year, we're going to submit uh, permit applications to the BLM, to NDEP in, in Nevada. Mm -hmm. And then we go through the process. We, we've done preliminary evaluations of, uh, of sage grass, of cultural resources, of uh, bighorn sheep, um, all the environmental factors that must go into it. We, we've started those studies already. What are your initial thoughts uh, what about Nevada's economic potential? in all this? Well, Nevada's economic potential is, is, is huge. Um, we, we just don't have the, we, we have the lithium, but what might come with the lithium down the road? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you have a resource, if you can bring in manufacturing to, to complement that resource, you know, like uh, a Silicon Valley in, in Humboldt sure, County, sure. but, uh, you know, may, that might be a long shot, but uh, it's going to be a, a, a boom for Nevada and it's domestic and uh, we're very proud to be part of it. Well, it's so great for Nevada, its reputation and, and everything else. But I, you know, I do want to drive us back for a second. In, in this horrid uh, economy, the, the potential for jobs just seems, uh, just well, seems huge. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the Both reason... direct and indirect. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the reason that uh, um, the, the job potential out there for the lithium 
the, the cars of the future uh, are going to be electric. I mean, look at, uh, look, look at what's happening in China. They're, they didn't manufacture cars 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. They manufacture more vehicles now than the United States does. And the demand, uh, they're, they're leading this electric technology. And we're going to go that direction with electric technology for the vehicles. The, the Chevy Volt is out there. The Nissan is out there now. Ten years from now, a lot of people are going to be driving electric vehicles. And uh, it, 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 the opportunity is there. We are, you can even call us, we're green. We are uh, we're contributing to the, uh, the, the technology of the future. Um, yeah, so... It's just, it's so exciting and so exciting for Nevada in so many ways, isn't it? Oh, ab absolutely. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, having a, we're, we're having a good time. We'll have to have you back when we uh, get a lo little further along in the process. But when we return, Mr. Bryan's going to talk to us about what should happen on Capitol Hill to make things a little bit faster and easier for companies like this to get through the permitting process and get uh, things like lithium to those products that you use every day. That's right after this. Every day, thousands of people in northern Nevada don't get enough to eat. One out of five children in northern Nevada go to bed hungry every night. But you can do something about it. Catholic Community Services of Northern Nevada has been providing help and creating hope in our community for more than 65 years. By donating food, time, or money, you can make a difference in a hungry person's life. When you make your generous donation to St. Vincent's Dining Room and St. Vincent's Food Pantry, you're helping to fight the scourge of hunger in Northern Nevada. In these tough economic times, now more than ever, we need to help those less fortunate. To find out how you can donate to St. Vincent's Dining Room in St. Vincent's Food Pantry, call, click, or stop by. And together, we can end hunger in Northern Nevada. Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Heads we go, tails we stay. A coin flip, that's how it all began for what is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Charlie Frias, with a can-do spirit and support of his loving wife, Phyllis, bought ABC Union Cab in 1966. They then parlayed five cabs into a fleet of nearly 1,000. And today, Frias has over 2,000 employees and was recently voted Las Vegas' best company to work for. Frias, safe, reliable, simply the best. All of us at Caesars Entertainment have something we want to say. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We don't want you to gamble if you've had too much to drink. You shouldn't gamble if you're lonely or depressed. And if you're under 21, you're not allowed to play. No, no, no. No matter which of our casinos you come to, our message is always the same. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of lithium's role in Nevada and in this nation. We've been visiting with Dennis Bryan, the vice president of the Western Lithium Corporation. Well, let's shift focus just a bit. We've talked about this exciting project and Nevada's potential for leading the nation in lithium production. Now let's talk about what my guest says needs to happen on Capitol Hill to make it easier for his and other mining companies to mine and thereby help maintain the lifeblood of so many rural communities in Nevada. 
Hal Quinn, the head of the National Mining Association, has appeared on this program three times since last fall, once with Senator Reid, once with Senator Heller, and once for a one-on-one -on -one with me. Now, make mo no mistake about it, our whole delegation has made clear its support, individually and as a team of the industry. Others in Congress, though, and some cabinet secretaries and administrations over the years haven't been as mining-friendly as the industry might like. The NMA and the delegation all say there have been overburdensome regulations placed on the industry. But that's not the big gripe from the NMA or my guest or even our delegation. The industry has said it'll comply with the regulation. The issue, leaders say, is the amount of time it takes to permit a mine, as well as uncertainties that can cause it to take many years to get through the permitting process. Here's what the industry says. The regulatory process is a moving target. Supporters of the industry say regulators, and they add more and more requirements, creating confusion and further slowing an already slow process. Then there are potential listings of endangered species in the mining areas, which curtail what can be done on the land. Then there's the plain old issue of access to public lands. Competing land uses means less land available for mineral development. Now, I, Mr. Bryan, I've heard that y you are on board uh, with uh, Mr. Quinn and the industry in general, but uh, it's saying that, of course, Western lithium is happy to comply with requirement. But again, it's those uncertainties that you've mentioned. Isn't that correct? Well, absolutely. And, and, and mainly around the time it takes to get the permits. Once you submit your application, the, the plan of operation, it, it goes uh, to the Bureau of Land Management, it goes to uh, the state. Um, and it just takes it, it the, the, the should I say the bureaucratic mm. process takes a long time, where it 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 could take two in some some uh, some of the gold mines it's taken up to ten years, and that they're not trying to get around any of the the, the requirements, the regulations, the environmental concerns. Uh, for instance, our our deposit we don't have any nasty. Uh, 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 water to, to to worry about at the end or mm -hmm. we don't have you know nasty things we're going to put in the air so it should be pretty straightforward but the the time it's going to take is still an unknown for us hopefully we can get it done within two years two and a half years perhaps okay. but for instance the sage grouse issue we don't know what's going to happen with that down the road. You know, it's it's uh, the, the whole permitting process. You know, we'll go into a store and we'll see a gold necklace or we'll see a person chatting on a phone. We don't think about all that went into the mining for the pro the products that went into those products. Oh, you've got to look for them first. Then you've got to develop them. Um, then you've got to actually mine it, but you've got to permit it along the way. You know, permitting starts at the very beginning. Uh, what's we the longest it can take? How many years? Well, some of the gold mines have taken up to nine, ten years, but but those are you know exponentially larger than we are. We're hoping to do it in two to three years, but one of our permits just to do the drilling to explore for, uh, confirm the lithium took 18 months, and uh, that that that, uh, that certainly w was a lot longer than we had hoped because you know, we could have people busy right now. As, as we were preparing for this show, when when you and I talked, you you expressed a lot of concern about that that sage grouse. Uh, you you called it a local concern, but what are its potential impact on access to public lands across the West? Well, it's, it's going to have the same uh, impact as the spotted owl did in the Northwest if, if they put it on the threatened and endangered species list, which could preclude a lot of activities on public lands, not just for mining, but for recreation, for, uh, uh, agri uh, for ranching, sure. for cattle grazing, etc. Mm. It, it could be a, a, a devastating not only for Nevada, but for any place in the West that has sage, uh, sagebrush. But right now we're optimistic that right now we're optimistic no problem for and, Western and Lithium I think, Creek uh, Project. I think everybody's on the same page, and I Good. hope the Fish and Wildlife Service is listening. So. Fantastic. And we're going to be right back with our final segment of Ion Washington right after this. All of us at Caesars Entertainment have something we want to say. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We don't want you to gamble if you've had too much to drink. You shouldn't gamble if you're lonely or depressed. And if you're under 21, you're not allowed to play. No, no, no. No matter which of our casinos you come to, our message is always the same. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. America's minerals have made us a nation of self-reliant dreamers. 
shaping our world and the endless ways we enjoy it. But red tape often forces us to import more than half the minerals we depend on. Minerals we already have. We don't import our dreams. Shouldn't that go for our minerals too? The National Mining Association. Learn more at nma.org. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Built on a fleet of just five cabs bought in 1966 by founder Charlie Frias, Frias Transportation is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Today, Frias has a fleet of nearly 1,000 vehicles and more than 2,000 employees. As an industry and community leader, Frias continues to create the future of transportation technology and management and actively supports the community, continuing the legacy of quality service in the Las Vegas Valley. Simply the best. Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. And we are back with our closing segment of Eye on Washington. You know, Mr. Bryan, as we've said, you know, mining has been a bright spot in an otherwise uh, pretty sour economy, especially in Nevada. Our delegation members are all strong proponents of mining. They pledge to do whatever it takes to keep the mining industry strong. But as the leader of a mining-related company, uh, if you could tell our congressional delegation just, just one or two things, the top things you'd really like them to focus on, what would they be? Well, I'd like to thank them for being proponents of the mining industry. And I'd, uh, as far as the lithium, I would like to remind them that this is domestic. We're producing jobs, just like the rest of the mining industry. And uh, at some point in time, we might knock on their door if we need some help with the regulators. And wh what about, uh, what would be your the, the main thing you'd say to them as far as helping you out, uh, as far as the permitting process, as far as uh, uh, regulations in general? To, to keep the regulations as they are, please don't add more to it. And uh, if we need help getting it through the agencies, maybe they can make a phone call for us. Good luck with this project. Well, thank you. It very really much, couldn't Bob. be better news for Nevada, could it? No. At least we... 150 jobs just through yours, and uh, 450 if you add the indirect, and then the potential from there. And it could grow. Thanks so much for being here today. Very exciting topic. I'll hope you're here again. Well, thank you, Marilyn. That does wrap up this week's Eye on Washington. I hope you'll join us next time as we discuss more important federal matters and their impact on you in Nevada. And for news anytime on how federal issues affect you, please visit our website, JoyceCommunications.com. I'm Marilyn Joyce in Washington. Have a great day.